A proclamation against Babylon, mercy on Jacob, the fall of Lucifer, Babylon destroyed, Assyria destroyed, Philistia destroyed, a proclamation against Moab, and Paul encourages the Philippians to find peace through prayer, praise, and practice. Today on 3 and 1, as we consider Isaiah chapters 13 through 15 and Philippians chapter 4. In the next 11 chapters in the book of Isaiah, God pronounces judgment on 10 different nations, 10 different Gentile nations, as well as on his own nation, which he would one day use Gentile nations to accomplish that judgment. Warren Wearsby said, God can even use the heathen soldiers to do his work and can call them my sanctified ones, like we read today in verse 3, because he is sovereign. In our first chapter today, chapter 13, we read the proclamation of judgment against Babylon which was a world empire, but is also an allegory for a world system. The prophet is proclaiming that one day, physical and spiritual Babylon will be destroyed. So do not place your faith in either. Now, Babylon was not the only one with a deeper meaning. Behind the Babylonian system was the ultimate conspirator, Lucifer, who is the leader of spiritual Babylon. And his fall was outlined for us in Isaiah chapter 14. It may surprise you to know that Satan was once Lucifer, a mighty and beautiful angel in the Lord's service. But one day, the father of lies deceived himself into thinking that he could take on God and that somehow he could ascend as high as God, saying, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. But believing your own lies does not accomplish a single thing. And the reality was, Satan would not ascend. He would descend, like we read today in verse 15. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms? who made the world as a wilderness? See, one day Lucifer will be brought low. One day Satan will be thrown into the lake of fire for eternity. And one day before that day, we will look on him and say, he freaked me out? He scared me? He intimidated me? Him? Yeah, that's what's going to happen. But until then, we need to know that he is still a formidable enemy and that he's been honing his craft for a few millennia now. And we need to know that we are no match for him in and of ourselves. But we also need to know that he is no match for God. It's not even a contest. God is omnipotent. Satan is limited. He is a created being. Satan is not God's arch enemy. Satan is not God's equal. God could end him for eternity at any moment. But in his wisdom, in his sovereignty, he won't, for now. For Satan, as evil as he is, still serves a purpose in God's grand plan. So just make sure that when you take your stand and you resist the devil as the scriptures prescribe, that you do that in the name and power of Jesus. Okay, on to our New Testament reading for today, Philippians chapter 4. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 5, For indeed, when we came to Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Outside were conflicts, inside were fears. Outside were conflicts, inside were fears. See, even the best of men are anxious and overwhelmed at times. I read a quote this week from Alistair Begg that said, Even the Christians that we admire the most for their godliness and giftedness are just as much jars of clay as we are. See, outside were conflicts, inside were fears, even for the Apostle Paul. So how did the Apostle Paul work his way through every day, through all of those outside conflicts and inside fears? Well, in our reading today, he outlined three ways, prayer, praise, and practice. Prayer was found in verses six and seven. Do not be anxious about anything, But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
Now, don't let the slightly antiquated language intimidate you. Let this intimidate you. <laughs> Chrysostom said this about prayer. The potency of prayer hath subdued the strength of fire. It hath bridled the rage of lions, hushed anarchy to rest, extinguished wars, appeased the elements, expelled the demons, burst the chains of death, expanded the gates of heaven, assuaged diseases, repelled frauds, rescued cities from destruction, stayed the sun in its course, and arrested the progress of the thunderbolt. Prayer is an all-efficient panel plea, a treasure undiminished, a mine which is never exhausted, a sky unobscured by clouds, a heaven unruffled by storm. It is the root, the fountain, the mother of a thousand blessings. Sounds potent, doesn't it? Sounds powerful, doesn't it? And yet it sounds somehow completely inaccessible, doesn't it? Let's try this again. Listen to this from Francois Fenelon on prayer and see if it brings prayer a little bit closer. Francois Fenelon said, Tell God all that's in your heart. As one unloads one's heart, its, its pleasures and its pains to a dear friend. Tell him your troubles, that he may comfort you. Tell him your joys, that he may sober them. Tell him your longings, that he may purify them. Tell him your dislikes, that he may help you conquer them. Tell, talk to him of your temptations, that he may shield you from them. Show him the wounds of your heart, that he may heal them. Lay bare your indifference to good, your, your depraved tastes for evil, your instability. Tell him how self-love makes you unjust to others, how vanity tempts you to be insincere, how pride disguises you to yourself and others. If you thus pour out your weaknesses, needs, troubles, there will be no lack of what to say. You will never exhaust the subject. It's continually being renewed. People who have no secrets from each other never lack for subject of conversation. They do not weigh their words, for there is nothing to be held back. Neither do they seek for something to say. They, they talk out of the abundance of their heart. Without consideration, they say just what they think. Blessed are those who attain such familiar, unreserved fellowship with God. Oh, that sounds so great, doesn't it? When was the last time you just went on a walk? I mean, an actual walk with the Lord and just, just talk to him about all of your outside conflicts and all of your inside fears. Just telling him the whole deal and then waiting and listening or talking to him about all of your struggles with sin without any fear of condemnation, knowing that he will not only hear you and, and hold you accountable, but he will also most importantly help you as a friend as a friend that loves you the same before, during, and after any conversation, no matter what the content. That is the opportunity that we have in prayer, unreserved fellowship with God. And, and then Paul said that one of the ways that he works his way through outside conflicts and inside fears is through praise. In verse 8, we read this today. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. See, we are to praise God with our minds, with our thoughts. We're to make the conscious choice to think on only the things listed here. And you have the power in Christ to do this. You have the power in Christ to take captive even every thought and make it obedient to Christ. And sometimes we have disobedient thoughts. Sometimes we have stinking thinking, and we need to give ourselves a checkup from the neck up in faith, forcing our thoughts to be in line with, with that which is true and noble and right and pure and lovely and admirable and excellent and praiseworthy. You have that power in Christ. So exercise it, implement it, praise God with your mind. And finally, the third way that the Apostle Paul made it through a day was practice. We have a, a men's meeting coming up on the second Sundays of the month called Building and Battling. 
where one half of our time together will be spent building, equipping ourselves for the work of ministry through Bible study and discussion. And then the second half of our time together will be spent battling, battling for our families, for our fellowship, for our city, for our country, for our brothers and sisters in Christ in prayer. And when I made the announcement, I acknowledged out loud that some of you men may be intimidated by that concept, the concept of praying publicly with other men. But don't be intimidated. We are going to practice together. Practice is such an integral part of developing spiritual disciplines. Practice is such an integral part of developing strategic loyalty to God. That was a, a phrase that came up in a meeting last night, developing strategic loyalty to God. I love that. Learning to walk in wisdom through practicing spiritual disciplines. So the Apostle Paul said in verse 9, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. See, practice may not make perfect on this side of heaven, but practice will lead to peace. So practice prayer, practice praise, lean into it and give it a go again and again and again. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you.